Hello, and welcome back to my tutorial on using the Unity UI system to build a non-game app, specifically a simple calculator. This is part two of a three-part tutorial series, and in part one I showed you how to assemble a UI that looks similar to the standard Mac OS calculator app, but will handle window resizing. This time we'll work through adding the logic for doing the calculations, how to handle the double width zero button, and how to hook into the Unity system that will let our code respond to changing screen dimensions. If you wish, you can download the finished project from GitHub at github.com slash cwgtech slash uicalc. Let's get started by loading the project from the previous part. We have the scene ready, and the buttons are all hooked up to call our script. The bottom row is different because there are only three buttons, so let's add the code to resize the zero button. Create a new C-sharp script in our scripts folder and call it Manager. When Unity is ready, drag it onto our Canvas object. We'll use this script to handle all the global functions for our calculator, including managing the button size and calculator logic. Double click on the script to switch to Visual Studio and add the following lines to the top of the class. Public vertical layout group, button group. Public horizontal layout group, bottom row. Public rect transform, canvas rect. Calc button array, bottom buttons. You'll need to right click on vertical layout group and select using UnityEngine.UI to pull in the references for these classes. You can also just type using UnityEngine.UI to the top of the file yourself. Create an awake method with the following. Private void awake, bottom buttons equals bottom row dot get components in children, calc button. With this code, we'll fetch references to all our calc button objects that are children of the last row into bottom buttons. This will allow our code to manipulate the buttons. Save the file and return to Unity, so we can hook up the public references to the correct objects in the hierarchy. Expand the Canvas object, then Main Holder, and the Button Group. With Canvas selected, drag the Button Group object into the Button Group row in the Inspector, drag Row 4 into the Bottom Row entry, and finally the Canvas into the Canvas Rect entry. Save the scene, and then double-click on the Calc Button script. We're going to add a rect transform getter to this script, which will allow us to fetch a button's rect transform when we need it. Add the following after the public text label line. Public rect transform rect transform. Get if underscore rect transform equals equals null, underscore rect transform equals get component rect transform. Return underscore rect transform. Rect transform underscore rect transform. This getter will return the cache copy of this object's rect transform if it is set, otherwise it will fetch it, cache it, and then return it. While we're here, add one more getter method that will allow us to access the manager script from calc button. Public manager calc manager. Get if underscore calc manager equals equals null, underscore calc manager equals get component in parent manager. Return underscore calc manager. Static manager underscore calc manager. This time we use a static var to cache the reference as it's the same value for every button object. We get our reference to it by searching back up through the hierarchy with get component in parent. Save this script and switch to the manager script. Before we write the hook code, let's set up a few other items we'll use in a moment. Add a variable above the wake method. Bool canvas changed. In the start method, add the lines bottom row dot child control width equals false canvas changed equals true. This allows the children of row 4 to control their own width. We could also uncheck the checkbox for row 4 in the inspector, but then our rows will no longer adjust themselves when we change the game view in the editor. The rows will only resize to match the width of the widest row. We're going to use a method hook called onRectTransformDimensionsChange that is triggered when a rect transform of an object that has a script with this method defined is changed. This is why our manager script is, is attached to the canvas object. Anytime the canvas or any of its children change, this method will be called on all attached scripts. This method is actually part of UI behavior, which is a subclass of mono behavior. Add the following method after the default update method. Private void on rec transform dimensions change canvas changed equals true. We set a flag when we detect a change in the rec transform and don't actually adjust the buttons until the update method. While this can add a one frame lag, it's not noticeable, but means we only adjust the buttons once per frame and not multiple times. This hook is called when the canvas change and any of its children's change. 
So it will be triggered a few times when a change is actually made. Now I add the method that will adjust the width of the buttons of the bottom row. Void adjust buttons if bottom buttons equals equals null or bottom buttons dot length equals equals zero return float button size equals canvas rec dot size delta dot x divide by four float b width equals button size minus bottom row dot spacing four int i equals one i less than bottom buttons dot length i plus plus bottom buttons of i dot rec transform dot set size with current anchors rec transform dot axes dot horizontal comma b width bottom buttons of zero dot rec transform dot set size with current anchors rec transform dot axes dot horizontal comma b width times two plus bottom row dot spacing this method gets the current width of our canvas and divides it by four to calculate the size of one button we adjust to allow for the spacing of the objects and then set all but the first button on the last row to this width which will be the same as a standard button width. For the first button on the last row, we set its width to be twice the width of a normal button plus one of the horizontal spacing. Finally, adjust the update method to call adjust buttons if the canvas change flag is set. Add the following lines to update. If canvas changed, canvas changed equals false, adjust buttons. Now when a change is triggered, we'll call the adjust buttons method which in turn will set the size of the buttons on the bottom row. Save the changes and switch back to Unity. Let it update and then click Run. You'll see the zero button adjust to be double width and if you change the width of the game view, you'll see all the buttons change and the zero button match twice the width of a normal button. Exit play mode and save the scene. We're going to add the calculator logic, but just before that, we'll need to add some references to UI objects that will hook up in the editor and some private VARs to manage a calculator logic. Switch back to Visual Studio and add the following lines to the manager class after the public VARs that we've already got. Public text digit label, public text operator label, bool error displayed, bool display valid, bool special action, double current val, double stored val, double result, char stored operator. Add a method after the adjust buttons method that will be called when we tap the C button to clear the calculator to a known state. Void clear calc. Digit label dot text equals zero. Operator label dot text equals empty string. Special action equals display valid equals error displayed equals false. Current val equals result equals stored val equals zero. Stored operator equals space. A method to update the display label, void update digit label, if not error displayed, digit label dot text equals current val dot to string, display valid equals false. A method to evaluate the calculation based on the operator passed. As you'll need to enter the Unicode character divide when typing this function, either use the method shown in part one of this tutorial, or switch back to Unity, highlight the button in question, and copy the character from the text field. Void calc result, char, active op, switch, active op, case equals, result equals current val, break, case plus, result equals stored val plus current val, break, case minus, result equals stored val minus current val, break, case x, result equals stored val times current val, break, case divide, if current val not equal to zero, result equals stored val divide by current val, else error displayed equals true digit label dot text equals error break default debug dot log unknown plus active op break current val equals result update digit label finally add the method that will process the button taps once again this method requires a unicode character specifically plus minus character so use the same method as you did last time Public void button tapped char caption. If error displayed, clear calc. If caption greater than or equal to zero and an caption less than or equal to nine or caption equals period. If digit label dot text dot length is less than 15 or not display valid. If not display valid, digit label dot text equals caption equals equals period question mark zero colon empty string.
else if digit label dot text equals equals zero and caption not equal period digit label dot text equals empty string digit label dot text plus equals caption display valid equals true else if caption equals c clear calc if caption equals plus minus current val equals minus double dot parse digit label dot text update digit label special action equals true else if caption equals equals percent current val equals double dot parse digit label dot text divided by 100 d update digit label special action equals true else if display valid or stored operator equals 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 or special action current val equals double dot parse digit label dot text display valid equals false if stored operator not equal space calc result stored operator stored operator equals space operator label dot text equals caption to string stored operator equals caption stored val equals current val update digit label special action equals false that's our calculator logic completed I'm not going to explain how it works, but you should be able to read through it and understand it. We now need to add a call into the start method that will initialize our calculator logic to a clear state when we run the program. Add this line to start. Button tapped C. This will simulate tapping the C key when we start. Note that the logic uses a simple char type to check for what to do with each key. If you didn't use a lowercase c for the first button, then you'll need to change what the logic expects. Save the file. Before we can call this logic working, we need to make another change to the calc button script. Switch to that file and modify the onTap method with calcmanager.buttontapped label.txt0. This will pass the first char from the button text string to the calculator logic. There's no error checking here as every button has had its string set in the editor. Save the file and switch back to Unity. Let it update, and when it's done, highlight the canvas object in the hierarchy. Expand digit strip, and drag the digits object into the digit label holder, and the operator into the operator label holder. Save the scene, and click play. As you click on the buttons, you'll see the calculator behave as expected. You can enter a number with or without a fractional part, and add, subtract, multiply, or divide it with another number. More importantly, you can do so while modifying the game view, and the buttons and displays will shrink or expand to fill the view horizontally. You can also build a standalone app from the scene and see what happens when you modify the window size with the mouse. Click File and then Build Settings. Click Player Settings and then expand the Resolution and Presentation tab. Enable Resizable Window. Click Build and Run and enter a name for the executable. I used UICalc. Unity will then build and run your application. When the launcher appears, check Window Mode and set the resolution to be less than full screen and click play to start our calculator. You can see as you adjust the window size the buttons and display will scale with the size but always keep their relative position and the zero button will continue to be twice the width of the other buttons. Quit the executable and return to Unity. If you open the build settings dialog again you can now make the app even more app-like and less game-like. Uncheck default is full screen, set the default width to 400 and the default height to 600. Change the display resolution dialog to hidden by default. Now, if you build and run, you'll no longer get the resolution dialog, but the app will appear right away. That's the end of this section. We have created a working calculator using our 3D engine, and with the added benefit of using layout objects to adjust the size of UI elements as the window size changes. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at CWGTech, or check out my blog at CWGTech.com. Please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. I hope you find this tutorial useful and informative. Join me next time as I switch the build platforms to mobile devices and demonstrate the calculator working in both landscape and portrait modes on iOS and Android.